love you, I adore you, I worship you, I need you, I hold on to you, and then whenever I hold on to you, I'm very happy, and for sure you bless me, you'll be with me all the time. Thank you, Jesus, you're with me all the time. I want to trust in you, you always bless, bless me. You always stay with me and always bless me so I can come to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So it's more building up the relationship with God. Okay? And motivate people to pray. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. So here, Jesus said, when you abide in me and my words abide in you. So uh, not only we have a close relationship with God, but we have Jesus' word staying in our heart, that we remember God's words, remember His promises, because His promises are wonderful. So remember His promises, and then ask what we desire, and it will be done for us. So when we have Jesus in us, and have His word in us, then when we, what we ask, He will be done for us. Now, some people say, how come it didn't come to us? Now first we understand that when we abide in Him and the words of God abide in us, then we'll be asking for God's will. We'll be asking for God's will, not for our needs only, but we'll be asking for God's will and then His will will come step by step. When we ask for revival, you know, revival doesn't come just in one day's time. We need to Preach the gospel. We need to train people, build up people, and then they will their spiritual true life will grow stronger and stronger, and they will, the revival will come step by step. So we trust in God that He will do His wonderful things. That when we have Jesus abiding in Jesus and His Word staying in us, then when we ask in God's will, it will be done to, for us. That He will open the way for us. Okay, so God treasures our relationship with Him. Anyone who has a close relationship with Him, God is very happy with Him. And when we have a close relationship with Him and let His Word stay in us and guide us, so let the Word of God stay in us and guide us, God will answer our prayers. Then what we pray according to His will, He will answer, He will respond to us. And when a person follows God's Word, his prayers are not just about the needs, but about relationship with God and His kingdom. So when we have God's words in our heart, then we'll pray for God's kingdom, God's will, God's revival, that people love Him more, and we love Him more, and send more workers, that you revive the Christians so that they are willing to serve God more. So then, then we'll be following God's will, and God's will will be done in our lives. So I hope that we we'll all pray in this way, that we say, God wants to bless me, God wants to pour His blessings upon me, God will continue to bless me, so I can trust in God and worship God, and for sure He will bless me, and, and, uh, and I'll pray according to His word, and then His will will be done. Okay, and then Psalm 37, 4. So I'm showing you how there are so many Bible verses with promises that can help us to pray. So we can use these promises, hold on to these promises, and believe that when we pray, God is very happy and God will for sure bless us. But some people, they say, oh, today when I pray, I don't feel anything. To say that God is not responding to them. But we don't depend on our feelings. We depend on the promise of God. When we come close to Him, He'll come close to us. When we stay in Jesus, He will stay in us and will bear much fruit. And then when we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, all these things will be added to us. So we hold on to His promises. Then, then we have confidence. Whenever we pray, He is close to us. Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. So when we delight ourselves in God, and He will give us the desires of our heart, what we desire in our heart, God will give to us. So this tells us that God knows our hearts, whether we delight in Him or not. Whatever, uh, He knows what we are happy about. Some people are happy just that <clears throat> they have brought some people to Christ. That is good. 
it is good that we can bring some people to Christ. <clears throat> but we should be first happy about God, His nature, and His grace, and His work. So we're happy God is working through me. God is working with me so that I can bring people to Christ. So we always link everything we do to God. When we do evangelism, it doesn't mean people will believe. It's God who works with our words to bring people to Jesus. So when we preach the gospel and then people believe in Jesus, we'll say, it is God's work. God is working through my words. Thank you, Lord. And God motivates me to preach the gospel. God changes my heart so that I have a heart to bless people. God gives me the motivation. God gives me the wisdom and the words to say. And then when I say it, the Holy Spirit moves in the heart of these people to change them, to bring them to Jesus and help them to grow. Now, so you see that I link everything I do with God. It's God working through me. Now, it doesn't mean we don't work. We do work. But the motivation of our work is from God. It's God who motivates us to serve Him. It's God who gives us the wisdom and the words to say. It's God who changes us so that we have the heart to do evangelism. So all this came from God, but I do speak, I do preach the gospel because God motivates me. God gives me the motivation. And then when I speak the word of God, God will speak through me to touch people's heart. So we can be confident of that and say, Oh God, you're so good. I'm so happy that you are working with me and through me. When I preach the gospel, you are so wonderful. So we, we are happy, not just because people are brought to Jesus, but we're happy it's God who brought these people to Him. It's God who changes me so that I have the motivation to preach the gospel. It is God who gives me the right word to say. It's God who gave me the Holy Spirit so that I have power to lay hand on Him. And then He experience, experiences the Holy Spirit and then He experiences healing or peace or comfort or, or, or exorcism. And then He believes in Jesus. He sees that God is real. So I see everything I do is linked to God. So I hope you all will say that. That in our heart, everything we do comes from God. Now, of course, we respond to God, but it's God who changes me, who gives me salvation so that I can start to serve God, I can start to preach the gospel, I can start to help people, I have compassion on people, because it is God who works in my heart. So, that in uh, delight ourselves in God means that we count all blessings from God. All the blessings come from God. Thank God I have the voice. The voice comes from God. Thank God. I can remember the Bible verses. This comes from God. Thank God. I have the motivation to serve God. This comes from God. Thank God that He uses my word to touch people's hearts so that see, people see that God is wonderful. So I hope from my teachings, and this is from the Bible, that we are to glorify God to tell people how wonderful God is. This is what we do. You know, you notice that uh, in the teachings in the Bible, the motivation is from God's grace and His nature. That we don't have to worry because God feeds the sparrows. And so He takes care of the lilies. So He'll take care of us. So I thank God He takes care of the birds. He takes care of the different animals and the plants, so He'll take care of me. So we rejoice in that. So when we count all the blessings from God and rejoice in God, then He will give us the desires of our heart. So I hope that we all learn to delight in God. Everything we have, I can walk, thank you. God is creative to create us legs so that we can walk. Thank you, Lord. I have legs to walk. I can jump, I can dance. I have my voice, I can speak, I can sing, and I have my mouth that I can eat. I have ear, I can hear music, I can hear uh, the voice of people and of God. I have the heart, I have feelings, thank God. Everything I have is from God. I'm very happy 
because of God. So I hope we all delight in God. And then when we delight in God, God will give us the things of the, de the desires of our heart that God will give us everything. So it's very important in our prayer, the prayer should be delighting in God. God, I delight in you. You're so wonderful. I like you. I desire you. I thank you. I, I desire you. I need you. I hold on to you. So God is full of goodness. Thinking about His goodness will give us joy. So God is full of goodness. Everything He does is full of goodness. So we think about His goodness will bring us joy. And praying includes appreciating God and delighting in God because of His goodness. So in prayer, we appreciate God. God, you're so wonderful. You're so good. I'm so happy that you are God, that you are loving God. I delight in you. I'm happy because of you. So our prayer, now sometimes when we are preaching, we cannot be have verbal prayer. But even in my preaching, very often I'll be praying. How? I'll just delight in God. When we delight in God, we don't have to think. Let me use an illustration. If someone is really in love with someone, whatever he does, whatever he, you know, whatever he's doing, he's, uh, he is uh, singing, he is uh, taking a shower, he is brushing his teeth, his teeth, he's uh, cooking, he is washing dishes, whatever he's doing, walking, he'll be thinking about his lover. When a person is in love, he will think about his lover anytime, anywhere. And whatever he is doing, he'll be, he'll be enjoying God. God, I enjoy you. I like you. I desire you. I want you. Then he'll be enjoying God all the time. So it's the same thing. If we delight in God, if we are happy about because of God, then we'll say, I'm happy because of you. I'm happy because God is so wonderful. I can trust in you. I can rely on you. So, when I preach in my heart, I just say, I like you, God. So I like you already is a prayer. So we can just all day long and say, I like you, Lord. I like you. I desire you. I delight in you. Okay. So when we delight ourselves in God, He will give us what our heart desire. So if we want something from God, then just delight in God. We should count every blessing to build up our, our delight in God. So we count all the blessings from God. And then we'll build up our delight in God and we'll be more and more happy because of God. Isaiah 58, 14 Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. So here it also says that when we delight ourselves in God, God will cause us to ride on the heights of the earth. And feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. So God, when He sees that someone delight in Him, He will cause that person to go higher and higher. He will give him wisdom. He will give him uh, knowledge. He will give him abilities and spiritual gifts. Let me tell you, after I experience the Holy Spirit, everything in my life just grow. That I learned to delight in God so much. I delight in God. I enjoy God and I have strength from God. And my preaching totally is transformed. And God changes me. So that when I speak, people will say, Wow, God is so wonderful. God is so wonderful. God is so good. And then people have more confidence in God and believe that God will do the best for us so we don't have to worry about anything. So God is full of goodness of every kind. When we delight ourselves in God, He will cause us to ride on the heights of the earth. That means He will cause us to go in a high place. We'll have importance and honor. He will give us the heritage of Jacob. That means He will lift our lives to a high level and bless us. He will lift our lives to a high level and He will bless our whole life. That we'll become a great person and uh, honorable person. Now, we don't get proud, but we thank God. He's raising our ability. And then we give glory to God all the time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for raising me up to a high level. I want to follow you more. And praising God and rejoicing in Him are the best things that we can do for our lives. So when we praise God and rejoice in God, it will bring blessings to us. 
our whole life will have blessings. So delight in God. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. You're so good. You're so wonderful. You're full of grace and mercy. You are kind. You are good. You are great. Then when we always delight in God and be happy about God, then it's already the best prayer. And then God will bless us. John 10, uh, 10 27. The motivation to wait on God. My sheep hears my voice and I know them and they follow me. So Jesus said that my sheep, my followers will hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So Jesus knows us and will follow his voice. His voice will follow us in many ways. Uh, you know, many people don't think that they can hear God's voice. Actually, every Christian must hear, for sure have heard God's voice. Firstly, when we uh, have sinned, then the Holy Spirit will speak to us and convict us of our sin. That is His voice of the Holy Spirit. And then uh, the Holy Spirit will move us to obey Him, to obey the Word of God. When we hear God's Word, He will motivate us to listen to God's Word and hunger for God's Word and hunger uh, to fulfill God's plan. So all these are the will of God, uh, the voice of God. He will move us to do evangelism to a certain person or to tell us how to do it and what to do and how to do it. He will give us the wisdom. And these are from uh, the voice of God. And sometimes the voice of God doesn't necessarily come only when we pray. Sometimes even when we are walking or when we are yelling at someone, someone yells at us and then we yell at them. We, of course, we should not. But I'm saying if someone is angry and then suddenly God speaks to him, stop yelling. Why are you yelling? Why are you so angry? So that is God speaking to us. So if we pay attention, the more we pay attention, the more we hear God's voice. The more we'll have motivation to do things God's way. And I hope that you all will take advantage that I will correct your assignments because this will help you to go to a high level. You know, not many professors or teachers are willing to correct all your assignments, but I'm willing to do that. It takes me time too. I respond to you. So you can ask uh, Bishop Stephen. I have given him a lot of responses, comments, and I send those in a group too. You can read those and see how I really pay attention to, to give responses. So this is a gift that now I can give to you. I don't know how long it will, it will come because one day God may call me to do something else. But when we have it now, please appreciate it. So this is motivation from grace. And also the reminder from the law, if you receive the equipment and don't use it for learning my teaching, then you are abusing God's money and then you can face judgment. So we don't want to abuse God's money and God's equipment. We want to use God's equipment and, and blessings in God's way. Now Jesus does speak to us in different ways. He does speak to us. All Christians can hear God's voice. He moves us to repent and follow His word so He moves us to repent of our sins and follow His Word and guides us to make decisions. He stops us from making mistakes. He tells us the needs of some people. Sometimes He'll tell us, go talk to this person, go care about this person, bring this person to Christ. The more we pray to Him and wait on Him, the more we can hear His voice and His voice will guide us to His wonderful plan. So the more we wait to pray to Him and wait on the Lord. Now we can wait on the Lord. Now. When we pray on the Lord, we don't necessarily just stay quiet. We can listen to praise songs, praise music, or we just meditate about God's Word or His work. We just think about God is so wonderful. God is so wonderful. God guide me how to serve you better. God, please guide me how to obey you, how to love you. So I hope you see how we can build up points on each Bible passage to build up points so that we can explain to people more clearly. Now warning, 
Now, in any teaching, we can have warning to remind people if they don't obey, what will happen? James 4 2, you lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend it on your pleasures. So here James says that you lust, you want something and you do not have. You murder and covet. You use different method and you cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Because you don't pray, you just fight and you want to get it. Now that is the way of the world. They just want to get something. They use force to get something. But we need to ask God. You ask and do not receive. Many people ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend it on your pleasures. That people just want to have more money for fun, more money to get married, more money to do certain things, and they just want something for themselves. As I said, we seek God's kingdom as righteousness, we delight in God, we love God, and then He will give us what we need. And then, the points here, uh, first we want to explain this more, that because people don't, now this is warning, people don't get it because they don't pray. And also they don't pray with the right motives, and then they don't get it. So, not all people who pray will get what they want. Actually, the Gentiles, in all religion, when they are in trouble, they will keep asking for blessings. And they think that with Jesus the same way. They think that, okay, I just keep asking, asking, and then God will give to me. And so we want to learn from the Bible. God is a gracious God. When we love Him, when we trust in Him, when we delight in Him, when we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to us. So God wants to bless all real Christians. All real Christians, God wants to bless. There are some Christians who are lukewarm. They cannot receive many blessings because they are fighting, they have fights with the family, they have uh, hatred in the heart, so they, all these sins will block the blessings of God. And many Christians have many problems in their lives because they don't pray or because they pray with wrong motives. So many Christians have problems in their lives because they don't pray or because they pray with wrong motives. This is what the book of James says. So, so when people pray with the wrong motives, they don't get what they want. They will, um, they will just have problems. So why do, why do some people they experience problems in life all the time? Because they don't love God, they don't follow God, they don't, uh, they don't pray with the right motives, and then it ends up that they lose more. Okay, how? Now, we just talked about motivation from different Bible verses. Now, it doesn't mean that you preach one uh, message and then have all these verses. You can use one message for one, uh, one passage, for one Bible passage for one message, or a few passages for one message. So how? It's very important to de develop the how. So first, have confidence from the Bible promises that when we seek God's kingdom and His righteousness and love Him and delight in Him and pray sincerely in spirit and in truth, God will delight in us and will bless us. So first thing, now this will apply to many teachings. Always trust in the promises of God. Now the motivation, for instance, how, how to overcome sin. Then we believe that sins are destructive and believe that when we seek holiness, God is happy with us and will bless us. So we hold on to the promises of the Bible. So when we pray, we hold on to the promises of the Bible that when we seek God's kingdom, when we delight in Him, when we love Him and uh, pray in spirit and in truth, God will give us what we need. We don't have to nag Him. We don't have to keep asking for the same thing. We just praise Him and worship Him. And when we pray, we pray with a relaxed, relaxed, joyful heart. We say, God, you for sure bless me so I can ju just relax and trust in You and rely on You and You provide for me and You bless me. I don't have to worry about anything. 
have confidence that even when what we ask does not come, God still wants the best to happen to those who love Him. Our lives will not be ruined when we love Him. Okay, so sometimes people, you know, they want money, they want to get married, they want a ministry, uh, and then it doesn't come yet. And then they lose faith in God and say, God doesn't help me. Because the way we look at life is different from how God looks at life. We just say, God, you are in charge. We trust in you. and We follow you. We love you. We obey you and serve you. For sure, you'll bring it to me. But it might not be in my way, but in your way. It doesn't matter. So even when we don't get it right away, We'll say, God, I trust in you. You will bring it to me. I just trust in you. I just relax. I don't complain. I don't complain to God because I don't get it. I'll just say, God, you will bring it to me. I can relax in you. I can trust in you. I can rely on you. I don't have to complain. I don't have to worry. So it's very important. When what we ask for doesn't come, we're still trusting God we still say God is good. And our lives will not be ruined when we love Him. It's very important that we believe that. That when we love Him, our lives will not be in ruin. When we love Him, our life will not be wasted. When we love Him, our life will not become nothing. When we love Him for sure, our life will go higher and higher. So I hope that you motivate people like this, that our lives will go higher and higher. When we love God, our lives will become higher and higher. We'll become stronger and stronger Christians. God will bless us more and more. So our life will not be nothing. So we have this confidence. Yes, Lord, I have the confidence that when I come to you in your way, pray to you in your way, you will listen to me. And then even when it doesn't come the way I want, still you are, uh, you are planning the best for me. When we love you, you, when I love you, you will give me the best. And three, remember how God has answered our prayer. So think about the past. So I'm demonstrating how, to, how in a sermon outline, how to have the how part, how to uh, hear, how to have motivation to pray. How He has answered our prayer in the past. So we remember that and we thank God for that and we trust in God. Four, be aware that doubts and sin are destructive. So any kind of doubt or this, uh, or sins are destructive, and take care of them. Sins are destructive, and so take care of the doubts and the sins, and doubting God, doubting ourselves and sinning, not seeking God's kingdom, motivating uh, will be uh, destructive. When we are aware of this, when we doubt God, when we doubt ourselves, oh, God doesn't love me, I'm useless, you know, this is doubting ourselves. And then also sins and any negative thinking are destructive. So in a prayer, sometimes when people pray, they'll just say, God, you're not helping me, God is not blessing me, God is uh, far away from me. So these are negative thinking. So we want to take care of this because these are destructive. So motivate ourselves to take care of, of uh, the problems, the doubts. When we pray sincerely, at the same time believe that God is very happy that we approach Him and can rejoice when we pray. So when we pray, we say, Lord, I believe that You are blessing me now. You're happy with me now. You want to bless me now. You're with me now. You're staying with me now. So when we pray, we always assure ourselves with promises. We say, when I listen to you, I pray to you, I respond to you, you for sure will delight in me. You rejoice over me with singing. You are helping me now. You are blessing me now. So when we pray, we always have the confidence. Yes, Lord. The Lord is blessing me. God is responding to me. I'm very, very happy. And then spend more time worshiping and loving God to build up an intimate relationship with God because an intimate relationship with God will bring blessings from God. Okay, now, so look at this again and then we'll conclude for today. The how. 
the first two points here are from the Bible, the promise of promises that when we pray in God's way, when we seek God's kingdom and His righteousness and delight in God and pray sincerely uh, in, in uh, spirit and in truth, God will for sure be very happy with us and God will bless us. So we are sure that God is listening to my prayer and He's responding to me. And then have the confidence, even when the things don't come, God is still blessing me. And then think about the past. Now this is very important in, in uh, how. Think about how God has blessed us in the past. How God has moved us to trust in Him. How God has moved us to rely on Him. And take care of problems. This is another part is very important. So beware of whatever is blocking our blessings. In prayer is doubts or lack of prayer. So what are these doubts? Why do we doubt about God and doubt about ourselves and have sins and don't pray? What are the reasons? And then we take care of these reasons. For instance, some people are just lazy or they think that prayer is useless, therefore they don't pray. Or they think that praying is just asking for things, so they just keep asking for things. Now notice that in some churches it's habitually that they always pray like this. Oh, pray for healing for this person, pray for the church, pray for the ministry, pray. It's always asking for things. Instead of leading the congregation to worship God, God, you're so wonderful, we love you, we worship you, we adore you. May your will be done. You want to bless us. You want to do great things in our life. Lord, we want to trust you and worship you and adore you. Instead of leading the people to adore God and love God, appreciate God, they always just ask for things for the church. So instead of just asking for things, we should pray more to love God, to honor God, to have a close relationship with God. So it helps us to remember how God has answered our prayer and then take care of any problem. Why? Some people problem is they cannot concentrate in the prayer. So how can we learn to concentrate? Whenever we are distracted, we always turn back to God. God, I trust in you. God, I rely on you. God, I come back to you. You always will answer my prayer. So I will uh, concentrate. You know, now it's very common that some people pray and then they start to think about food after the prayer. They think about what they have to do after the prayer. Would immediately turn back to God. God, I love you. God, I adore you. I need you. I want you. I desire you. So we want to come back to God and take care of the problems, whatever it is that block us, stop us from praying and getting the blessings of God. And then when we pray, believe that God is very happy and God is blessing us. So we can be happy too. Whenever we pray, we say, I'm happy, I'm praying. I'm happy that I know that God is listening to me. God is blessing me. God is loving me. And then spend more time worshiping and loving God. So we break down points that are practical so that people can apply it in their life. Okay? If you have a problem uh, breaking down the how and the grace of God, these are the two most important parts of the, of the message is two most important parts of the message that God's nature and grace and then how to apply it okay the other parts of the message I've talked about before interpretation of the passage and negative examples of people who disobey and then positive examples of people who obey for instance to pray okay negative examples of people who don't pray or pray with the wrong motives or in the wrong way and then positive examples of people who pray with power and confidence and have a lot of healing and miracles and people are changed. People answer prayer. And then God's nature and grace. How God, He knows our needs. He wants to bless us. He is generous. He knows that we love Him and then He will for sure, He will bless us. And then uh, the warning Okay, the warning uh, to people that if they don't pray or they pray with the wrong motive, they don't get what they want. And the pre also another one is the reason why people don't pray. So that people wake up people. 
So why they don't pray? Why they don't obey God? And then how? How can we build our prayer? And more, the more, most two most important parts are God's nature and grace and how. Those are the two important parts, most important parts. So if you don't have the other, uh, all the parts, remember these two parts are the most important. Now, of course, sometimes warning is important too. So the people are warned if they disobey, what will happen? If they don't pray, what will happen? Okay, God bless you all. We'll close to the prayer. And please stand up and open our heart to God. Thank you, Jesus. You are loving God. You are loving. You are, you know, you are adorable. You are, you are kind, God. You are powerful. And you want to bless us. When we come to you, for sure you come to us. Lord, we adore you. We need you. We hold on to you. We love you. You are our life. You are our everything. Everything we have comes from you. We want to give honor to you. We want to follow you and worship you and adore you. Father, your name is wonderful. You are wonderful. You are so great. I love you. Lord, help us to have a good prayer life. Help us to love you all the time. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, God bless you. And I hope you do the assignments. And when you do 10 satisfactory assignments, then you get the first level of certificate. So I got pray for God's blessing on you that you learn and do apply to your ministry so that you and your members will delight in God and say, God is so wonderful. I want to obey God. I want to love God. I want to pray to God. I want to serve God. So the people are motivated from the, by themselves that they are motivated to love God and serve God. And then your church will grow. Okay, God bless you.